Welcome back to the Wider Channel. I've been doing some research on the best way to get power to the Dash of the Spider for things like charging phones and plugging in the occasional GoPro. And last but not least, when our CarPlay arrives, we're going to have to have a place to plug that in. So I've looked at the different options and there's the accessory power plug that's like the old cigarette lighter. There is a couple of different options with dual USB ports. And what I really wanted was one that had a USB-C port with higher amperage. So I found one on Amazon. It's just like the switch ports that are used in other applications. We're gonna install that today. So without further ado, let's get the show started. All right, so we'll start with unboxing the product here. This, like I said, is available on Amazon. It is the switch type, just like uh, all the rest of the majority of them on the market. This one has the power delivery port, which is USB-C. Um, it is a 20 watt power delivery port. Then it has the standard USB-A that does uh, three, six and nine to 12 volts. Again, the link is in the description for uh, the Amazon. It is an affiliate link, so it does help the channel. It doesn't cost you any extra. This also has a blue underlight uh, that uh, I have yet to see it, but we'll give that a shot and see how she looks. All right, so along with the switch, I have a section of 16 gauge wire, uh, two strands, and this is all uh, stuff I keep around the garage. Um, I will put a link in the description of what type of wire if you're interested in doing this yourself. I also have these uh, spades. Um, this one is a, a spade connector that when you heat this up, it actually shrinks around the wire to create a seal, which weatherproofs that. So I have these in the garage. I will put these uh, a link to these in the description as well. So if you're looking to do it. I'll be able to find it. The other thing we're going to add today is the RAM ball mount and the stainless steel screws so we can get rid of the rusty screws that are holding the handlebars down and have the RAM ball mount to mount things like our Apple CarPlay. So let's head over to the spider and start taking the plastic off to run some wire. We're going to fish the wire from the switch panel up here down through and down between the front and the front frame is where that's going to go. So what we're going to do is we unzip this, open it up to here. There is a plug, a rubber seal plug. Get that guy out of the way. We're going to unscrew that battery cover. Should make that a little easier to get to, it's just not. The guy that we're looking for is that one with the purple, purple and yellow right there. Yeah, 
and it is zip tied. And just a little bit of a pull and we got them out. So it wasn't that bad after all. Find the bus route up. It looks like that'll get me right in the neighborhood. All right, now that we're up to this point, we're gonna take this out, a little cover there. Let's take a little screwdriver to pop it out. We'll pop, snap, crackle, pop, and get her out of there. So that is not the shape of the hole that we need. So what I've done is measured with a set of calipers and made this nice little design here. This actually fits perfectly. All right, so this is a struggle point for most people doing this. And what I did was I cut this just wide enough to get it in between the switches and actually under them. So the switches are actually holding this in place. So now all I have to do is score carefully. All right, now Take that out. I should have a pretty well-defined line. Let's hope so, because I just broke the template and I don't want to do it again. Actually, I have a nice well-defined line and I will cut it the rest of the way out. Just like that. Now, without pushing this down, I'm just going to dry fit it there. Yeah, that's going to be perfect. Now, next thing is getting this wire up through that hole. My little grabber device might actually come in handy for this, too. This is one of those devices that uh, I think is essential in doing this kind of thing. Hopefully this can be seen right here. All I did was I have the wire right here. This made it down and through. Let's see if I can do this one handed. Try that again, see if I can do this one-handed. Bring that out. Put the wire inside, let it clamp in. And I can just feed it right up through. I left myself plenty of extra wire. Next on my list, I'm going to strip the wire back. With the razor, I just put a little score in there and then you bend it back and forth and it 
falls right off basically. And then the wire strippers. So these I can see, wire size, 16 gauge. And I'll grab those connectors that it came with. And these are nicely color coded so we can see that the blue and the red are in that one. Give it a uh, extra uh, uh. and survive the pull test. Yep, it is surviving the pull test. We'll do that same thing with the negative wire. Give that one an uh, and a, uh, uh. pull test survived. Now we'll hook these up. Negative is the brassy colored one. Positive being the silver colored one. And just like that, we have our connection. So now with all this extra wire, I can actually pull it back. And we'll get her seated down in there. Snaps in nicely. I would say that looks right about perfect. Pull this wire back. And down into the front. Same thing. I'm actually going to zip tie this wire right here onto that wire loom. Never go too hard with a zip tie. They do a really good job of pinching wires and shorting things. Flush cut. And now we'll go back to the frunk, wire that up, and test her out. So we're going to cut a couple feet off of this. For that I'll use my flush cut tool again. I'm going to leave it a little bit long. Still. Leaving it a little bit long so we can uh, roll it up and zip tie it. Makes it a lot easier to work with. Again, I'm just going to give it a little score. Not really cutting much at all. And it just snaps. Don't want to cut into the wire below. Excuse me, don't want to cut into the wire below. I'm just trying to put a little score, and then if you wiggle it back and forth, again, 16 gauge, right in the middle. Give it a little more than that. There we go. Give it a there we go. And same thing for the negative wire. This side of the wire is slightly different because it is the, the shrink tube kind where we apply some heat to that. 
we can get that to shrink down and be waterproof. Again, like I said, that makes a nice weather tight seal. We don't have to worry about uh, water penetrating into that. Next thing we're going to do is plug that into purple and yellow, is going to be our red, our hot. Still got a little heat to it. There we go. And black to black foreground. Break up, break off enough of this electrical tape that uh, I can go around the hot lead first. Okay, and then I'll go around the both of them together. Nice and tight. Push that back into the space. Put our plug back on, keep our front water tight. Battery cover back on. Give it some of my favorite Ugga Duggas. Ugga Duggas. zip the front back up, close it up, and we'll be ready to go. All right, so there's our installed power port. I'm going to turn on the power. I see that I have blue lights in there. PD port and a QC3, which is our standard USB. For giggles. I'm going to plug in my phone. Charging. Excellent. Take these bolts out and we're going to put uh, the new stainless steel ones in. This is uh, something else that's on my replace list. Is this is all pitted? I'm sitting outside. So a new handlebar at some point. I 
I'm gonna put the ball mount right down in that one, so. millimeter so now for the rest of that I'm going to tighten that by hand job itself. There we go. And last but not least, the ram ball. When we get our CarPlay device, the ram ball mount will mount right there. And it should be just right. Now all that's left to do is put all the plastic back on and color it a day. So there you have it folks, the new style power port is installed. Links for that and the RAM ball mount are in the description below, uh, along with some of the supplies you might need if you're planning on taking this on yourself. If you enjoyed today's video and you like the kind of content the wider channel is providing, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. It really helps with the growth of the channel. If you have anything that you'd like to see me do to this spider, please leave it in the comments down below. I do check them every single day. So. With that being said, that's all I have for today. Hopefully, I'll see you on the next one.